All right, I think we can go ahead and get started. Welcome to trade.io's group demo. Just so you know that you're in the right place. This is a live demo. It happens every week on Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Let's see. I'm your host, Sandra Bautzelar. I'm on the marketing team and I'm joined by my colleagues, by my colleague, Thomas Wang who is a senior sales engineer here at Trey.io. So in today's demo, we will show you how we can automate a deal desk process. Often sales teams and sales ops professionals struggle to keep up, especially if there are multiple deals, emails back and forth and proposals to sort through. This manual process slows your sales team's response time to deliver a proposal to your prospects. If it's a competitive situation, this can put your team in a bad position to win the deal. If sales ops cannot keep track of what has been approved, then your company is at risk of, uh, over, uh, of over discounting or passing along a proposal that is not aligned with your company's policy, pricing policies, which could lead uh, to a proposal being recalled or cause a problem when you need to renew this customer's contract. So this is essentially what we're building in the Tray platform. Um, we're, we will show you how you can keep your sales ops teams apprised of every proposal submitted and alert your field reps to know exactly when their proposal is approved so they can instantly follow up with their prospect. Once the opportunity in Salesforce hits the appropriate stage, a Slack message is generated alerting the sales ops team and the AE then once approved, the opportunity is updated accordingly and ready to be sent to the prospect. So without further ado, I know that you all want to see what this looks like and how you can create this process yourself. Let's jump into the trade platform with Thomas, who will be leading uh, today's demo. So Thomas, take it away. Cool. Thank you, Sander. <clears throat> So um, as Sandra described, what we're going to do today is show a quick demonstration of this uh, deal desk <clears throat> use case here. Uh, what we'll have first is kind of demonstrate it uh, working live. So we're going to have a uh, Salesforce opportunity move into a pricing or proposal stage. This is going to then uh, surface all the information about that opportunity within Slack. It will give you an interactive uh, Slack message with not just the information about the opportunity, but also a chance to either approve uh, or reject this. So upon approval, it will move on uh, the stage to the next one, which is gonna be negotiation and review. After uh, seeing this demo, we're going to then examine what's under the hood, uh, take a look at the two workflows that power the specific use case, and then talk a bit more about what's involved and kind of what uh, specific features are uh, <coughs> capable of, uh, within the trade platform. All right. so. Again, we right now want to move this into the pricing and proposal stage. And upon that, we will see uh, the opportunity show up here in the deal desk demo channel in Slack. Okay. Cool. So as we've seen, uh, the opportunity is here for deal desk review. We've shown uh, the opportunity name, account name, close date, the type, as well as some information. So this is customizable if you want to sh uh, share any additional information or uh, less information, this is up to you. You have two options, approve and reject. Again, this is customizable as well. So if you'd like to uh, share additional options for your, uh, your admins to be able to go through, you can do that as well. So what we're gonna do is upon approval, it will give you a message as well. So uh, it removes the options so that people can't override it. It shows that it was approved by myself. Uh, and similarly with the reject button, uh, if, if, that was, um, <clears throat> if that option was chosen, it'll say rejected by Thomas Wang and remove the options. Okay, so let's take a look over here. And it's moved to negotiation slash review, which is the next stage because the uh, opportunity within DealDesk was approved. 
All right, so in the next section, again, we're just gonna walk through the two workflows that power this specific demo and see what's involved there. So to, to recap what Thomas just did, um, the stage and opportunity, uh, the change in stage in Salesforce triggered a message in Slack uh, then Thomas approved uh, the request in Slack, which created another workflow uh, to change the stage in Salesforce. And so now we'll see what this looks like under the hood. Yep, exactly. So we've got one workflow that essentially watches for the stage change in Salesforce. So whenever a stage changes, we want to see if it's within the proposal or price quote stage. If that is true, then we go ahead and get some account details. We can do some formatting and post it into Slack. Uh, you can see that the workflow builder is very visual. Um, it's very drag and drop as well. The second one is very similar. It watches for a specific event to happen, which is a, an action within Slack. We retrieve user details and then determine whether or not the button was an approve or if it's a reject. So if it's approved, then we go through and reply to the thread, update that message, and we update stage in, in Salesforce to go to the next stage. Obviously, on the reject side, um, it doesn't update Salesforce because it did not get approved. So let's take a look at some of uh, the things that you can do within uh, the builder and just kind of the basics here. So as I discussed, we're watching for specific events to happen within Salesforce, within Slack. These are what we call automated triggers. So as long as the services you're looking to connect to support webhooks, and we can make them into real-time event-based triggers. Now let's take a look at what other trigger options there are. So when we go through the triggers page, you'll see there are tons of options here. Uh, anything that range from form triggers, manual triggers, schedule triggers, and so on. Uh, some of the key examples include uh, manual triggers, right? So a lot of times when we're doing testing, we may not want to wait for an event to happen. You just want to run the workflow and see what the results are. So you can use this option. We have a schedule trigger as well, so you can use this to pull for new information at any given cadence, whether it be once a minute, once an hour, or it can be more advanced options as well. As I mentioned, as long as webhooks are supported, we can set that as a destination so your source uh, system can send to tray uh, any data uh, in real time. Everything that you see from the second row onwards is what we call automated triggers. Again, these service logos that you see here uh, are here because they support webhooks and we can make them into these event-based automated triggers. One thing to note too, um, as a general automation platform, uh, we are product agnostic. So we use Salesforce and Slack as this demonstration, but if you use other CRMs, if you use other messaging platforms, as long as they have APIs, then it's something that you can use uh, in this use case as well. It doesn't have to be limited to these two systems. Now, let's take a look at some um, further things that you can do. For each of these connectors, to configure them on the right side is what we call the properties panel. So this is where you can do things like selecting relevant operations. Each of these operations align one-to-one -one with what's supported uh, from an API endpoint perspective. So when you're thinking about feasibility of your automation goals, as long as uh, the services such as Salesforce, Slack, or any of those systems that you're looking to connect to support the operations that you need, then it'll either be something that you can pre-select here or something you can add on to this. Furthermore, um, typically when you want to connect your systems, you'll want sandbox um, credentials first, so you can test it out. That would be sandbox or development environments and promote it into um, <clears throat> then production environments. So you can create and manage your, uh, your different authentications here very easily. You'll see there's sandbox production. And when I click on this dropdown, I have multiple uh, authentications saved. Moving down, a lot of times when you have these kind of record type dropdowns, what we call dynamic dropdown lists. So these are all record types associated with our Salesforce test instance. Uh, if you have custom records, custom fields, these automatically pull from your instance as soon as you authenticate. So it's very easy to select those, no need to kind of remember API names and so on. Same thing goes with the fields. These are all pulling live and directly from our Salesforce instance. Now let's take a look at some of the uh, connector options. Uh, you've seen some examples here of what we call service connectors. So these being your Salesforce Slack connectors. There are also uh, different ones such as core connectors, 
as well as helper connectors. So there's three main categories of connectors. Let's go through the first one here. So the core connectors you see on the left side, things like true false that you've seen examples already. You can do branching as well if you want to uh, branch based on perhaps uh, the opportunity type, uh, perhaps it's renewal, uh, new opportunity and so on. Uh, there's no limit to the number of branches you can make. So essentially all of these co uh, core connectors are there for you to um, deal with this information, build out that business logic, things that you would typically do with code. But again, we've kind of abstracted that information, allowing you to accomplish all you need with these drag and drop connectors. Thomas, can you, could you explain to the audience what the, the Boolean we have in this workflow, just go into more detail about what it's actually doing and what it's looking for. Sure. So we have a Boolean condition in both of these examples. The first one is to check whether it's the specific stage that we're looking for. Um, recall from the example, when uh, the opportunity is moved into proposal slash price quote, this is uh, the condition in which we want to uh, post this information to Slack. It's not every opportunity update that we want to post into here. So you can retrieve um, information from previous steps to test very easily. So I'm on the properties panel for this Boolean condition step. I want to check the stage name and see if it's equal to proposal slash price quote. I can retrieve any information from previous steps. So this is what we call a connector state. I'm trying to select an, a specific value to test from the opportunity uh, that I've retrieved from Salesforce. And I've selected these uh, opportunity fields for me to choose. So I'm, I selected the stage. Does this equal to proposal slash quote? If it's true, let's branch to the right. If not, let's go to the left. Um, similarly with the Slack one, all we're checking to see is whether or not the action was approved. Um, and then obviously on the false side, it is a reject. With the drop down option, um, keep in mind too that uh, with all of these select options, you can select as many fields as you like. So uh, right here, we've, we've just had a handful that we wanted to surface in the demo, but I can add any other of these fields as well, such as close, um, contact ID, and so on. All right. So moving forward to the second section of connectors, these are what we call helpers. Um, again, uh, these help you kind of massage and transform information that you would typically, again, have to do with code, but we've um, allowed uh, users to, to accomplish these without, uh, with, with these pre-built helpers. So one example that you've seen here is when I posted into Slack, uh, the amount message, when it comes out of Salesforce, it's simply a number. We can choose to format the currency. Another uh, very straightforward example could be a date and time helper. Again, each of these connectors have uh, a large number of operations associated with them. So these are all things that you can do uh, to massage the date and time information. So let's say you want to reformat the date into a different format. I can retrieve that date from Salesforce again and then format it into any format that I like or any custom format there. So just quick examples of the helpers here. Um, for those who might be technical and want to uh, write your own code for custom type of logic, uh, custom things, we do have a script step as well. So you can use this to pass in information, any number of data uh, variables of any data type, and then use your own script to customize that logic. Thomas, uh, we, we have a question that is relevant to, to the use case from Michael. Um, he says, uh, you can have multiple approvers, correct? You would be creating a new group message in Slack specific to each opportunity stage change, or is it just a channel in Slack where you can add additional uh, members slash approvers? Yeah, so in this specific case, uh, we've created a deal desk channel. Um, every organization works a bit differently. The way that we have it is that channel, channel is going to be private and only allowed for people who do have the approval power. That way they can go in and approve that. Um, with regards to uh, you know, what multiple users being able to do that, you, you can see that within uh, the Slack workflow, we get the specific user that gave us that action. So you'll know who made the approvals, who made the change. Um, if you'd like to actually post messages into different channels as well, we actually do this internally. So you see right now we only um, post it into the deal desk channel when it's proposal slash quote, you can actually use a branch, right? So uh, we have another channel that's called uh, just the sales opportunity channel. So you can see progressions of this, um, of each opportunity go into different stages. So we have different channels for different purposes. So let's say, um, you know, 
uh, you want a different branch for negotiation. And then have another branch. This one is for pricing. So again, each of these branches can take a different path. And so you can post it to distinct channels and different channels, depending on what you'd like. Uh, so we can move this over here. And uh, as you can see, the kind of the logic can grow. And just depending on what your business logic is, right? Every organization has different logic that they want to follow. And so there's no limit to um, the number of channels, the number of users uh, that can fall into this workflow. Thank you so much uh, for your question, Michael. And if, if anyone else has questions, feel free to use the Q&A box to uh, drop your questions in. Cool. Um, so we went through the core connectors, the helper connectors. Uh, I mentioned there are three types. The last one we've already seen uh, quite a number of examples. So those are our service connectors. Uh, these being your Salesforce, Slack. We have over 300 pre-built connectors now. So anything that has an API or a way to connect uh, can be built into one of these uh, connectors. Uh, there, additionally, uh, for those who want to make very quick connections to new services, we do have a universal uh, HTTP client option as well. Let's just put this in the bottom. This is a very Postman-like uh, connector where you can uh, enter any URL, make any REST-based API call uh, to any endpoint um, out there. So uh, for cases where we perhaps don't have the specific endpoint or, or connector built out, you can use this option as well as request us to build um, additional connectors and endpoints.